All right, everybody, welcome back to another Ask a Dev Blueprint Fundamentals or Visual Scripting for Creatives Methods Applied. We are actually going over our second method for using arrays and loops in order to find the closest object to our character, for example. Now, picking up where we left off, we have an array of objects and we want to find the closest one to our character. So if we take a look at this, we're going to go over this visually again to plan out what we're talking about for the second method, because what we're actually going to do is we are going to use a second array to help us figure this out. So if we take a look at this, we have our original array of objects. They are ADCB as shown here, and we have our character. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a second array. We'll call it distances, for example. And for each item in our objects, we're going to calculate the distance. So that's what this represents here. And then once we have all of the distances calculated, we're going to use a built-in Unreal function that will give us the minimum or the maximum float in an array. And we're going to use that to get the index of the original objects. Because if you'll notice here, I have these lined up for a reason. We have our array of objects. We have our array of distances. They are the same length. The distance for A is going to be in index zero. The distance for D is going to be at index one and so on. So when we figure out which of these is the largest number, in this particular case, the last one, the index three of the largest number is the same index as our object that is, in this case, the biggest. In the case of the smallest, it would be index two. That's the one we want to get. So that's what we're doing. We're going to get all of our objects, make an array, store all of our distances and find the biggest one. Now let's do that in practice back in our project. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to, we're working from where we left off before. So we have our actors, we have our items here in the scene and we just wanna find which of these question mark items is closest to us. If you missed the first one, you can go back and check that out. I'll, I'll show you basically how, how that one worked out and that's how we got to where we are. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this get closest this object and then just delete everything inside. So we're starting from scratch and we're also going to name it. We're going to call this get closest object method, method B. Excellent. And just like before, we need a list. We need an array to start with because that's, we need a array of objects. So let's get all, we're gonna get all actors of class. And in this particular case, our class is going to be our item base. Perfect. So now we have an array of actors to work with. Now what I want to do is I want to, like I said, create another array. And the other array that we're going to create is going to be an array of floats. So in our local variables, once again, because I'm not using this outside the function, this is only for the function, I'm going to create a new uh, um, array and we'll call it distances. And we're going to set that to be a float. And by default, you probably defaulted to a single item. We want to make sure we check array up here in the corner because we need an array to match our object array. And then all we are going to do is just like we did before, we're going to loop through our array using our for loop. And we are going to calculate the distance from the item in the array to the actor, in this case, self, because this is all happening on the third person character. So I'm going to get my actor location. This is the actor location of the third person character, me, the player in this case. And I'm going to get the actor location of the item or the object. And once again, we are going to get the distance. Now, what we are going to do with this distance is we are going to add it to our array of distances. Now, when we start, our array of distances is empty. So if we go through and the very first item we get to, we, we add the distance to the array, it is basically going to fill the distances array as we go so that they will match. So to do that, it's a little counterintuitive. If we get our distances, what you do is rather than setting, which is normally what you would think you would do, what you do is with your distance array, you're going to choose add. And in this case, we are going to add the distance. 
And that is almost it. What that does is that creates an array of distances that is of equal length as our actor item array. Now, all we have to do is use that Unreal function to figure out which of these distances is the smallest in, the, in this case. So once our for loop completes, I'm going to get our distances array. And we there's two functions we could use for this. The one we want is min. We're going to get this min of float array. And you'll notice that what this does is it returns the index of the item. And remember, back from our planning, these indices line up. So if the index of the smallest value is two, then I know the index of the object is two, and that's the one that I want to return. So all I'm going to do is from my actor array, I'm going to get the item that is at index of the min value. And as before, we are going to return we're going to add a return node and we are going to return our closest actor, our closest object in this case, closest object. And it is going to be the value for the object that is in the original actor array at the same index of the shortest distance. Now, while we're in here, just for kicks, let's say you wanted to find the furthest object away or you were doing something like which gun has the most ammo or the least amount of ammo. There's also a max, just so you know it's here, max float. So you could use either one, one to find the, the closest and one to find the furthest in this case, or if we're talking about the uh, which bag has the most gold in it, you could get the uh, max, the max of the array, and then you'd get the, the heaviest bag of gold, which would be sweet. Okay, so now that we have our return, giving us our closest object. Let's go ahead and go back and visualize this just to wrap this up. So in our event graph, we were originally, remember in our first uh, setup, we originally were drawing the debug sphere. We're going to do the same thing again, but we kept both methods, so they should draw a sphere in the same place. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's get the closest object. <clears throat> And that's method two. We're, we're making sure we're using method B in this particular case. And then I am going to draw another debug sphere. And this one we're going to make blue. Now I am going to change the radius of this sphere. The reason I'm going to do that rather than if we drew them both at size 50, they'd be right on top of each other. You wouldn't be able to tell. So I'm going to go 40 on this sphere. And with that closest object, I'm going to get that actor location. And with that actor location, We'll keep everything else, duration of one, thickness of one, and we'll just make it uh, pretty blue. Okay, and that should be it. Let's test our second array applied. There we go. We have our, uh, we have our hot pink and our blue array. And this is two different methods now that is showing us the closest actor. Now, if I walk around, it will update as my timer updates. And if you missed how this is working from the original, you can go back to the original arrays and loops applied, but basically we created a timer by event and every two seconds it will update, uh, it will update drawing our debug spheres in this case. But obviously you would do whatever you want to do with the closest actor or most ammo, etc. Okay, so that wraps up our second method for finding the closest item to our character. We can use that to find the closest or the furthest, the smallest bag of gold, the largest bag of gold, whatever we want to do uh, using a second array and that built-in Unreal function. As always, tell us what you think. Throw your comments in the comments down below. And if you're excited about this, our next one, our third method is actually going to be even more fun. It's a little bit more involved. We're gonna be using some more classic uh, visual scripting stuff like sorting arrays and things like that. It should be a blast. As always, if you like what we're doing here, help us out, spread the word. See you all in the next one. Take it easy.